Welcome back, Zero K fans. This is Shadow Fury Three Three with another exhibition match replay. This time, we're going to be on Fields of Isis, a map which, for those of you who have played Supreme Commander, should be familiar. For those of you who haven't, well, it might be familiar because you've probably played it. I mean, it's been a spring map for the longest time as well, so it should be also familiar. It's fairly old, actually. We're going to have a game Lowry and Flipstep, and oh yeah, I meant to reset that. Yeah, because that was a game before between Loud and Flowstep, but these aren't sequential, so I don't really honor the wind counter. These are completely different times in the wrong order, so I don't really... That doesn't make sense. The wind counter doesn't make sense there. Anyway, Flipstep is going to be... Wait, should start the game first. So yeah, Fields of Isis. It's a map with a deceptive amount of reclaim. This is actually only about 500 in each section, or, or less. Like, this is actually for the amount of space... Like consider that this 600 here is on each side around, so it's 300 per side. That's not all that much. Like for command, okay, it's 30 seconds of extra metal, like 30 seconds of, say, a commander running through. But that's running all the way through with the timings. A lot of people do not really consider this to be particularly valuable for reclaim. I have, I personally think that all reclaims good reclaim, but it's not the most popular map to get all this reclaim on. It's also a map where this section here tends to be really powerful as a the gateway. You stick your units here. Like Flipstep's doing exactly that. They're sticking their factor right here, making sure it's hard for anyone to get behind. Unless, of course, that person goes for air, which in this case, Lowry's not going for. Thus, it's not a big deal. Lowry, however, playing into one of the pockets, a bit more of a team-oriented strategy. In team games, it wouldn't be surprising to see this, but in 1v1, it's a little bit surprising because it makes it harder to defend the northwest, but it makes it a lot easier to defend the southeast. Sorry, southwest, in case, say, air came in. So Lowry looks like they're anticipating Flipstep is going to go for air. Flipstep looks like they're anticipating Lowry is going to go for ground. And we'll see how that plays out. Start the game. Also, yeah, 1.79 constant around the map, every single metal spot. There's like 10 on each side that it's fairly defended, so you can pretty easily get about plus 20 metal on top of the commanders. So it's like plus 26 metal without all that much fuss. So Flipstep, starting out with their constructor, really just wants to build up as much as they can. Wants to get hang back, build up. Lowry, on the other hand, going for a couple welders into a panther. They're definitely going for more of an aggressive strategy. Flipstep, getting some scouting going pretty early, but yeah, they are not looking to be going super aggressive. They do have some Scorchers coming in later on, but this is not aggressive. Aggressive would be dart, one Dart, one Scorcher, one Mason, and then Scorchers and such. It's Scorchers and Masons together. This build order is not aggressive. This is, I want to know what my opponent's up to, but overall, I just want to make sure my opponent doesn't mess with my well, my reclaim and my construction and everything. My taking my entire side, my plus 18 or so metal. And all the reclaim. That's basically what it says. Lowry, on the other hand, looks like they definitely want to be a bit more aggressive. Given that they did start out in a pocket, it makes it a bit harder for them to push out. And it's easier for them to hole up in case of a siege, but it makes it hard for them to push out and expand. And like I said, de defending the northwest is going to be a little bit trickier until this center pass is taken. However, Flipstep, because they are going for ground, Lowry does have a better chance of going towards the center. Like I said, the big problem is when you have air coming in. You have air coming in and it goes over the ridge and just becomes impossible to defend the south, sorry, defend the pockets, defend the west and east pockets, because you have to then build defenders around there, you have to have units around there. It's really tough. So air, this is a good strategy defending against air, this is a good strategy defending against ground. However, I'm fairly certain that neither player is being aggressive. Like, Lowry doesn't look like being aggressive enough that it's going to really make a difference either way. And Flipstep is not being aggressive enough that it's going to really punish Lowry for this. Not yet, and honestly, Lowry's getting defenses up in time. They're going to get the center, and once they get the center, they get the north for free. But Flipstep, however, does have the dark here. They will know when Lowry goes to the north. And Flipstep, on the other hand, they're going for their own... They're going a bit further out with the commander, which makes sense. Did upgrade pretty quick. I think both commanders are upgraded. Yeah, both commanders are upgraded. So both players going for econ commanders makes sense on this sort of map. You, you would. This this is a map where building up the economy early on is very important. And flips to, yeah, they're getting that built up. A bit slower than I expected though. In fact, Lowry is ahead economically despite the fact they started out in that pocket, which makes it a bit harder for them to build up. And that, the only difference is that when you start out in the center, you do have to go backwards into the pockets, which means it's a little bit longer to actually get to the metal extractors. Part of the reason why Flipstep have gone forward to take this metal extractor, a little bit risky, but it does mean they have the three metal extractors right off the bat, which is what they want to begin with. Whereas Lowry just has three really close by metal extractors they can work from. 
So they had a much quicker early economic boost, but at the same time, they had to work a bit harder to get the north. Not that much harder, all things considered, though. At this point, a couple Scorchers could still get in if they go through the center. If they go, like, go like this, they should be able to get in. They, they would be hit by the Defender and the Lotus a bit. But they sh they'd probably be able to get through. It wouldn't be a problem. However, the Panther, that will be a problem. That will be a big problem. And Flipstep, realizing this, retreats. Holds back, gets some levelers. Good plan. Have levelers while Lowry continuing to go for Panthers. Lowry probably just going to try to econ up to about plus 30 or so. They're at plus 23 so far. I believe that, yeah, that's with Reclaim. So they're going to try to get probably at a plus 30 or plus 35 or so. Build a couple Caretakers and then push out Reapers. That's probably what's going to happen. That's what you, when you're going with heavy tanks, you want to get plus 30 or so. And then from there, you want to build up and try to get Reapers or Banishers. Because that's the unit you're really going for. That is your bread and butter combat unit. But at the same time, it's also really expensive. Or sorry, your bread and butter combat unit is the Panther. It's your late game combat unit is the Reaper. And of that, we do have three Panthers so far over Lowry. But at the same time, we only have about half a dozen... Okay, the level is a bit of a problem, but only half a dozen Scorchers for Flipstip. And it looks like an engagement is brewing. Flipstep eyeing the south side of the map is not aware of where Lowry is positioned, did not know that Lowry was there. Lowry on the other hand knows exactly what's going on, knows exactly where Flipstep is, where Flipstep's attacking forces are, and able to get rid of one of the Scorchers of the Lotus. Will pro might lose the Welder in the process, will kill another Scorcher though. And the Panther's coming in, yet another Scorcher goes down, and the Leveler is the only thing that would have dealt any damage, and it was way too far back by the time that that attack came in. Flipstep they attacked blind, and they lost a lot of units for it. Still going for that welder, able to take it out. But they lost a lot of stuff. They need to retreat, they need to regroup. Trying to get rid of these lotuses, but they, they haven't got a chance. These units here are not enough. The units that are coming in, the second leveler and the remaining Scorchers, those should help. Assuming these Scorchers get pulled back and healed up, or I think they have auto repair. But otherwise, yeah, there's not much that can be done here. So... Flipstip, they need to retreat, and they are there regrouping. Lowry, on the other hand, looks like they are bolstered by that attack. I mean, they know that they can beat Flipstip's army. Like, Flipstip, they attacked for the scouting force, lost most of it. Lowry knows they have probably a slight military advantage. I don't know if they know they have an economic advantage. That's a fairly large one, too. Lowry has taken their entire side of the map. Flipstip, they are taking it, but they, they're taking the pockets, but kind of slowly. They're still, they're still a bit behind. Lowry is still considerably ahead. Part of that being overdrive, worth pointing out, there's actually this, these metal extractors here are double their normal production. They're running about plus three, or no, sorry, not quite double, about one and a half times. They're plus three on what should normally be plus 1.8. So Lowry is getting plus 12 from this section alone. Flips up in the other hand, not really focusing too much on power, and they are trying to focus on getting rid of these Panthers. These Panthers are a major threat, got rid of one of the metal extractors. And Flipstep losing Scorcher after Scorcher to these Panthers. Not even able to take out one, though. Only one that was even damaged in the back. Gets killed by a Lotus. The only thing that manages to take it out is that Lotus that happened to be properly positioned right at the south there. Actually, we'll take out two Panthers. Or will... No, it won't. Not quite. Nearly takes out two Panthers. But the second Panther is now in a very dangerous position. It is going to be most likely hit if it gets hit. But Lowry, they will be able to raid out these particular metal extractors. Gonna hit the commander, though. Gonna hit the Lotus. They're gonna lose yet another Panther. This Panther's gonna be gone. This second Panther won't be stunned out in the process. Lowry, Mike Ring, quite nicely, putting the stronger Panther up front, but even then, it's not gonna be enough. Weaker Panther dies, and the stronger Panther will die on its way out, getting hit by the Lotuses. And actually, the Faraday as well, for good measure. But yeah, this Panther basically needs to do all the damage it can, because it is on a suicide mission, and now it has died. That was a fairly short mission. Flipstep, as a result of that, getting boost, bolstered themselves. Their confidence is up. They're moving into attack. They're going to lose a lot of units to this Stardust. In fact, I think all these Scorchers, they might be able to kill... No, they're going to kill the Stardust. But no Scorcher survived, thanks to the Stardust death explosion. However, Lowry has very few defenses over to the north. Flipstep can attack over to the north, and Lowry has not yet gone for Reapers. In fact, Lowry is switching entirely to air, pushing a lot of focus on their air. Their tank factor is pretty much only being used for Welders and Panthers. They're switching heavily to air. Not at all what I predicted, but still not a bad strategy. And Flipstep similarly is going for an air switch. Flipstep's air switch is slower, though. Lowry has the air factory up. Flipstep is not going to have it up for another five seconds. 
flips to without quite as many caretakers nearby, and the economy, however, is very even. It's coming down a lot to reclaim right now, but flips up going in with an army of levelers. Five levelers is coming in. Well, okay, not quite an army. A very small contingent of levelers. Okay, for 0k, this is pretty big. <laughs> at this stage in the game, at 8 minutes in the game, this is fairly big. And we do have a Reaper. My mistake. I did miss that there was a Reaper built. Levelers trying to do their best. But they aren't quite at the optimal range to deal with Reapers. The optimal range is actually about that. Well, okay. The optimal range is as far away as you can possibly be while still hitting the Reaper. So that you can dodge the shots. Because Reaper shots can be dodged. It, you just have to micro around them. They will lead. It's a bit tougher for vehicles, naturally. I mean, they have to turn around and then move it. It's, yeah. That's a bit tricky to, to dodge Reaper shots. It's much easier with bots. And yeah, Loudly also has both of these Geo plants. Has, has all the transmission pylons. Has 136 energy. Oh, yeah. I should also give compliments to Hokomoko for making a small tweak to this display. As you can see, it's a full font size. And we have all the numbers up to, th up to hundreds. I could easily make that thousands if I had to, but I don't have to. It never goes up above hundreds. And similarly for the value, I don't know how high this goes. I'm guessing it goes up to the hundreds of thousands, but that's that's much higher than I'd ever need. Usually tens of thousands is all I need. But still, it does do that. And this can go up to hundreds to thousands, I think maybe tens of thousands. At any rate, thank you Hokomoko for that. That's That's quite helpful. So Flipstep actually dealing quite a bit of damage, tearing apart Lowry's front... Porch. Tearing apart all these lotuses, the Reaper is trying to do what he can to defend, but it's only one unit, and these levelers aren't even paying attention. They're just tearing apart everything they can. The Panther's able to destroy the part that of that attack that had gone south, and the Reaper able to survive those shots. But the levelers able to take out the the, the support Panthers, they do not last. And Scorcher coming in to try to deal a bit more damage. That Reaper is able to kill a lot of things. And Flipstep has to be careful here. They are dealing damage. But they are pushing in a lot of reclaim into Lowry's territory. Unless they can claim this territory for themselves, which would basically be tantamount to winning the game. They're giving Lowry... How much metal are they giving Lowry? Let's find a worker here. They're giving Lowry... They've given Lowry so far a thousand metal. That's including rocks. But yeah, they're giving Lowry a thousand metal or so. As both players have gone air, Lowry gone more for bombers than fighters. Flipstep have gone more for fighters than bombers, but at the same time, they're both pretty even on the numbers. Flipstep have continued to destroy that front door, getting rid of his... Or sorry, front porch, getting rid of as many of the lotuses as they can. Actually, all of the active lotuses in the center have been destroyed. There's one of the south that are being... Or a couple of south being built. A couple of the north that are just way off in the corner. It's not going to matter for a center assault. At this point, Lowry, while they are ahead militarily and about even economically, does not look to be in a very confident position. Building more Panthers, but right now they only have three Panthers and... Oh boy, Flipstep. They have... Okay, two Levelers, three Scorchers. Do they have any Ravagers or anything? Nope. Their army is primarily in the air. They have... Okay. They have about ten Bombers. Ten Ravens. Two Lowry's. Three. And Lowry has far... I think far fewer Swifts? No, Lowry actually has more Swifts from the looks of it. That louder looks to be the only one that actually has Swiss at all, come to think of it. But even then, I'm not sure how much that's going to matter. Flipstep, I mean, they can't really attack. That's the only downside. There's been a lot of military force put, or a lot of military spending put into that one part of the assault. It's not really mattering all that much. These, these Swifts are not doing any good. Flipstep just threw those away, and at this point, the entire assault has been removed. The center has been broken down. Lowry has been opened up a bit. And Flipstep is taking some of the reclaim, but overall, Flipstep did just feed Lowry about a thousand metal. Flipstep's trying to take back as much of it as they can, while also taking the center reclaim. However, Lowry looks to be just... They're in a better spot to actually take all this metal. There's more protected, it's easier for them to get it. Surprisingly, they aren't actually dealing with the fact that there is a worker right there that they know about in their territory. But they will soon enough. These Swifts are coming in here, and there's... How many Swifts are there? It's like 20... Yeah, 21 Swifts. Compared to none. Flipstep appears to be probably going for... Okay, getting a chainsaw to try to bait the Swifts out. Kill them that way. And then go into the Ravens and try to destroy either the Factory or the Commander. Or maybe the Moho Geo. Actually, the Moho Geo would be the target. Holy crap. That's five bombers too. If five bombers hit that Moho Geo, most of this base is going down. Because that's going to explode. This pylon's going to explode. That pylon's explosion is... 
Oh, for... Well, okay, apparently SpaceX does not show me the explosion radius as I thought it did. Nope. Nope, I guess not. I suppose I'll have to look up with a builder. Which actually doesn't help me either because that... You know, it used to show. SpaceX supposed, is supposed to do the explosion radius if I click on something. Oh well, anyway. The point is the explosion radius is, of this is a nuke. It's going to be around this. And then this explosion radius is about this, which might damage this solar plant. If this doesn't destroy it in the process. Mr. I can't see that though. That's actually surprising. Nope. No, for whatever reason, it's... Is it just Singularity Reactor? Okay, I must be... I must have turned off a widget by accident. That's probably what it is. That aside, Flipstep continue to try to attack over to the north to no avail. Sadly for Flipstep, there's nothing they can really do here. At least not without getting quite a bit of dedicated anti-gear. They do have a few... They have a crasher here. They do have the chainsaws, which does mean that Flip Lowry can't really take advantage of the air superiority to come into Flipstep's territory and start wrecking up the place. Flipstep has fairly secure territory as a result. But we are in a bit of a stalemate situation, which on Fields of Isis is... Well, it's always a pain in the butt, but on Fields of Isis especially... <laughs> I was kind of hoping this wouldn't happen. However, that being said, it is still a situation where Lowry is on the back foot slightly. Flipstep is ahead... Well, they appear ahead. They have more territory, but they're actually behind. Lowry is ahead economically, thanks to overdrive largely. <laughs> At this point, yeah, they're they are tripling by overdrive. Like, their metal extraction is tripled in their base. So despite the lack of territory, they are way ahead. Yeah. Just yellow to blue. Yellow is much higher overdrive. Blue is like, I think, double? Maybe? I'm not entirely sure. No, not even. Sorry. Blue is like an extra 30% or so. So yeah, blue is about four thirds compared to triple. The so Lowry's ahead economically. Lowry's ahead militarily, mostly in the air. Although there are Reapers, and there's a couple Reapers as well. That's 1700 right there. And the Swifts. Okay, most of those. That's between both players. Between them both, it's like 5700. But now Flipstep loses all of their bombers for nothing. Unfortunately, that was everything they lost. The Air Force is still being knocked down. Lowry's losing a lot of the Air Force to chainsaws and to crashers. Of which there are now about half a dozen. The Reaper's causing issues for those, but the Reaper's not actually able to kill them in one shot. 640 damage per shot and 900 health. So sadly for the Reaper, there is no way they can instantly kill those Crashers, leaving Flipstep a pretty good position to go for. However, however, Lowry still has a heavy tank factory. They are still pumping out Reapers, and now they're pumping out Reapers. A bit later than I expected, but they are still doing it on plus 85. And all of their caretakers are pushing into it. These Reapers are taking 10 seconds to build each. They frighteningly fast set of Reapers. I mean, we're going to have about half a dozen Reapers pretty soon. And that is Strider class. It's four already. Once you get five or six Reapers, you're basically at the point of Strider. Incidentally, Flipstep has not built a Strider hub. Flipstep, in fact, has not really built much of anything to really escalate. And Lowry is almost doubling Flipstep's metal value for their army. Not to mention doubling the energy value. In fact, I may need to add one... <laughs> I also need to add one column to this from the looks of it because Lowry is getting really high up in their energy. In fact, they're building a Singularity Reactor. I'm... I'm apparently not kidding. They're also building a... Interesting. Building a missile silo. I haven't seen that in a while, but that is that is a perfectly sensible move. With the 17 minute mark in the game in a game like this, missile silo is exactly what I would... Like, that's... That makes sense. It's a good stalemate breaker. They're going to be firing off Inferno missiles, trying to burn down all these defenses. They're going to be trying to just take out the ground units, especially the crashers here, because Lowry, they focus so much on air that flips to just go for this change, and it, it works. Granted, there's about half a dozen Reapers now, so that's that's a good way of breaking the siege as well. But hey, add the Inferno missiles, and that's just one more way of doing so. Assuming we actually see Inferno missiles, I don't see any being built so far. Lowry appears to have forgotten about them. Regardless, okay, there we go. No, actually, AF, oh, nice! As a side note, this is actually my forum avatar. <laughs> the Aos, Tactical Nuke. Not sure why, but yeah, it does that. But yes, I actually quite like the Aos. I mean, 
okay the inferno is generally the favorite most people go for the inferno because it sets up a massive fire burns out a bunch of stuff it leaves itself around long enough to deal damage it's got a very wide radius it's just only works against very light targets like say a field of defenders or a bunch of crashers or a bunch of cloaky bots actually or hitting the factory is also pretty good it tends to kill off the caretakers very quite quickly but I but we see the AOS is being built up in fact okay now there's the Inferno so only a couple AOS's might have been a misclick might have just been that loud I wanted to have these to take care of a couple things here or there because the splash on these is not particularly like, this is the splash on them see where that how the circle goes like that yeah it would barely kill all three of these defenders if it hit them on the other hand the Inferno its splash is this doesn't deal as much damage and we do have a strider hub by the way from flip yeah it doesn't deal as much damage but it has a massive massive area of effect and tactical loot coming down into sorry the inferno coming into that defender nest exactly where it should be the other one coming into the other defender nest burning that down as well not able to do anything but the razor I'm curious where the aos's are going to be used oh no none of them have been used yet i am curious where they're going to be used but that was exactly where those infernos should have been used perfect positioning right there nearly perfect positioning missed a defender each time but that's fine those were those were well placed shots and the strider hub is up we have an ultimatum being built up and it looked like we had some oh yeah some funnel webs have been queued and a dante as well it's a dante yes yeah, a dante not a detriment it is a dante so there is a massive queue on this strider hub but at the same time this is strider territory we have eight reapers that's 6,800 metal. That is the cost of like three ultimatums. That's actually the cost of a Dante and a half. Like, there's a lot going on there. But at the same time, Flipstep does have, well, have the crashes and, and ravagers. But yeah, they are kind of stalling at this point, which makes sense. They're stalling until they get the ultimatum up. And once they get that up, which admittedly they have to stall quite a lot. Cause, holy crap! Lowry has a massive military lead. They are still double in military. Massive mil massive economic advantage, 103 metal out, 103 metal to 63, and now the Reapers are coming in. They are just coming in. There's a Goliath on top of this too, from the looks of it. Yeah, there's a Goliath. This this alone is basically Strider class, on top of the half dozen Reapers. I mean, this is just end game. The Ultimate is gonna die. Down it goes, and well, it's gonna nuke even before it's completed. But yeah, I think Flips is gonna throw in the towel because there's not much more to be said here. Because really, like, Lowry just had their air protection enough. Flipstep couldn't take out the Moho Geos. If they could have taken out the Moho Geos, they had five bombers that could have gone in and hit those Moho Geos. This would have been a very different game. As it was, that was not the case. There were far too many Swifts in the air. No Hawks or anything could really take care of them. And ultimately, that's game. Well, at least, at least the stalemate didn't last too long. But yeah, Flipstep throws in the towel, and yeah, that's the explosion of the Moho Geos. It is a nuke. No, no kidding. It is a, it's a nuke. It's a strategic nuke explosion, effectively. So that was that game. Fairly interesting game. Good demonstration of how the game can be pushed back and forth, especially when you lose a lot of forces in your opponent's base. That was kind of interesting, though, because, like I said, Lowry did not have, they didn't have the center taken from the start. Well, Reimark did. Actually, Lowry was going for a protector just in case. Not a bad idea. Bit of a bad read, but they had the money to spare. Anyway, as I was saying, they didn't have the center well protected at first, but they got it protected later on, and Flipstep didn't take advantage of the fact that they were stuck in a pocket. Not that it's easy to do so, but there wasn't much advantage taken. Flipstep was not playing aggressively. So Lowry was able to really get away with this, no problem. Able to work from this and overdrive... The overdrive was very well placed. The flipstep did not overdrive anywhere near as much, and Lowry took full advantage of it, ending up even with less territory with far better economy as a result. So, good show for how overdrive can work against territory. Yeah, you gotta be careful when you have territory that you don't get overconfident. And forget your opponent has overdrive. But yeah, I think if there were no if the Swifts were destroyed, if Flipstep got air control, or at least got in long enough to take care of the geothermal plants. Especially when there were Moho Geo plants. After that had been completed, after that switchover. But both because of the cost and because of the fact that their explosion is much larger. That would have been a different game. That would very likely have been a very different game. Especially if Flips have had, after destroying the Moho plants, taking advantage of the opening to send in a few units. Timing that right would have been crucial. 
But even just destroying the Moho Geos on their own would have... That would have pushed Lowry back a whole lot, economically. And given Blipstep a lot of room to breathe. Anyway, that didn't happen, but good notes for future games. So we're going to have another game, one last game. It's going to be between Flipstep and Rymark, who is actually watching right now. Hello, Rymark. Flipstep and Rymark. It's going to be on Wanderlust. And it'll be up in just a moment, so stay tuned. <laughs> 